Good evening. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm Steve Matthews, and I'm honored to moderate again this year. Uh, first, this is uh, for candidates for the school board for the May 4th election. And early voting will start April the 22nd, go through the 30th. And you can vote either at the municipal building or at the um, Allen ISD Municipal Service Center. So for uh, the trustees, uh, our format is this. We're going to give them two minutes for an opening statement and then one minute to close. And then uh, I have a series of questions that, as Susan said, were submitted in advance. I'm going to mix those up a little bit so that not everybody answers the same question to kind of keep it interesting that way. And so you don't hear five verses of the same song. And um, so anyway, I'll be taking care of that. And I'll also alternate who answers first in each place so that uh, we try to keep it fair that way. So uh, for this first question, uh, each candidate has two minutes for an opening statement. And uh, they're seated in ballot order. And I'm just going to start, Sarah, with you and just go down the line. Welcome. Well, hello, and thank you to the organizers for your efforts, to the audience for your time and engagement, and the other candidates for your willingness to serve. I am running for re-election for the Allen ISD School Board, Place One, because I am dedicated to continue to serve Allen ISD. During my 24 years here, I have grown from grassroots involvement to both in both our schools and our broader community, including leadership Allen, Ch Allen Fairview Chamber class of 21, um, class 21, and the inaugural leadership Allen ISD program, and PTA president, foundation for Allen School Board, amongst other things. So, and including, I am the current board president. So my husband, Brent, has been the Allen High School P coordinator and head swim coach for more than two decades. And we have two wonderful daughters. Jordan is a graduate of Allen K through 12 and now in college and playing tennis because of the wonderful programs we have here in Allen. And my youngest is Reese, a junior at, at Allen High School, and she also plays tennis. So, um, and as a trustee, I will continue to focus on building on the great foundation and traditions we have here in Allen and continue to focus on our goals, culture of excellence, future ready skills, and empowered learning, as well as ex executing our graduate profile. Thank you. Shannon, before you start, I forgot to mention the timekeepers. We all raise, wait. <laughs> uh, so you'll get reminders at the 30 second, 15 second, and then at the end, if you need it. All right. Thank you, Steve. My name is Shanna Coulter, uh, also running for Allen ISC School Board, uh, place one. Uh, you know, I wasn't born here in Texas, and uh, someone used to joke with me, like, oh, you weren't born here, but you got here as quickly as you could. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I got to Texas as quickly as I could, but when I did get here, Allen was certainly where I wanted to call home, and I have for the last 16 years. Um, during that time, you know, I've built a family on the east side. I'm a single mother now with two children. Uh, I'm a tax director by day, a triathlete by night, um, as well as, a, I guess, a homemaker, if you want to call it that. Um, but, you know, my involvement in the school has always been more focused on my kids and, and where, you know, where their success was going to be. Um, I've always kind of assumed that, you know, everyone's vision for Allen and the school district were the same as my own. And at this time, you know, I kind of see uh, visions changing, and I'm hoping that I can impart some of my vision um, into the community. I've always believed that Allen is one community, and that was what drew me here in the first place. I grew up in a small town in Colorado. Um, this was the closest small town feel and single unified community that I could find um, with that I always believed that you know as people ask me why Allen only one high school and I said you know if your kids can compete in Allen they can compete anywhere and that was one of my major drivers and a big priority for me um, through this term the things that I would like to focus on would be you know our education standards and retaining teacher retention and fiscal responsibility and accountability Hi, my name is Vatsa Ramanathan. Uh, moved to Allen in 1999. 
family. I have one wife and two daughters, um, and one dog. Two uh, dog and I are the male uh, members of the family. Uh, anyway, uh, I did my um, uh, leadership Alan in 2010, and since then I have been involved in uh, the school district and the city in many different boards and uh, and committees. Um, you can go to meetvatsa.com, not M-E-A-T, it is M-E-E-T, vatsa.com, and you can see my bio, you can see my priorities, and my experience uh, in serving the community. And I am running for place two, Alan ISD. Um, again, my name is Vatsa Ramanathan, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Veronica? Good evening. My name is Veronica Yost, and I am married to Michael Yost, and we have two children, um, Adam and Tyler, and a daughter-in-law, and two precious grandchildren. We, my family and I moved to Allen in 2005. Um, we could have lived anywhere in North Texas, but we chose Allen because of its school district and what it had to offer for our son that would be entering kindergarten in the fall. I am running for Allen ISD School Board Trustee Place 2 to ensure that everyone is represented at the table. I am passionate about this community that I call home. Allen ISD has built an excellent reputation of a, I'm sorry. <laughs> Allen ISD has built a reputation of an excellent school district and I want to give back and serve Allen ISD. As a mom of a special needs son, who graduated from Allen ISD in 2019, I bring a different perspective and vision to the table. And unless you've walked in these, this path, you don't give it a second thought. As a parent, you want your student to have the best schools, to have the best teachers, and to achieve their maximum potential. Well, special needs parents want the same. I care about this school district and I want to make a difference. I will advocate for all students in the district. I want all students to excel from our gifted and talented students to our special education students in the district. I want every family to feel welcome and know that we are here to serve their students. I want Allen ISD to lead the way in achieving exceptional educational outcomes. I have served in this district in one capacity or another through Allen ISD on various committees. I, attend, I was in Allen ISD leadership. Um, Veronica, I'm sorry to cut okay, you off. Sorry. I know two minutes goes fast. <laughs> yes, Bill. Yeah, good evening, my name is Bill Pilcher and I'm running for Allen ISD School Board Place 3. <clears throat> Thank you everybody for, for having us all tonight. We, we all appreciate that. A little bit about me. I've lived here with my lovely wife and four fantastic kids for about 14 years now. Uh, two of the kids uh, unfortunately didn't have the, uh, the advantage to going to Allen ISD schools, but the younger two have and are still there now. I have a sophomore and a senior at Allen High School. My official photographer tonight is my lovely wife, Brenna. So if you see her walking around, that's, that's who that is. Uh, I'm a local boy, uh, grew up in Richardson, uh, went to elementary, junior, and high school there. Uh, then went down to Texas A&M for about four years, uh, graduated, came back up to the area, uh, joined the Air Force active duty in 1986 and retired in 2011. Um, when I was ready to retire, I asked Brenna, hey, where do you want to go? You followed me around for a few years, so now it's your turn. And uh, since we both actually grew up in this area, she said, I want to go back home and be near family. So we came back, we looked around, and we found this little gem in North Texas called Allen. And it was just fantastic. We fell in love with it. We bought a house here. We raised our two younger children here. And as you know, they've gone through the entire uh, Allen ISD school system. Why do I want to do this? I speak to my kids often about civic duty 
in community involvement and patriotism. I want not only to speak with my kids about that, I want to demonstrate that to them. So not only do I talk the talk, I want to walk the walk. I also say I'd rather make things happen than watch things happen. So give my experience as an Air Force officer, give my experience as a proud parent, I've got some school district leadership on my resume, and my volunteer experience, I know I can do a really good job for you, for the kids, and for the taxpayers. Thank you. And I do want to mention that the other candidate for place three, John Holly, was unable to be with us tonight. So for this first uh, question, I'm going to ask this for the candidates in place one. Shanna, I'm going to start with you and then Sarah. Just talk for uh, a minute about your vision for Allen ISD, specifically what your priorities are, and if there's anything that the district's not currently doing that you believe it should. Wow. One minute for all of that is kind of a lot. Um, thank you. My vision for Allen ISC is for a more in-depth communication and more accountability and transparency amongst the community. Um, overall, I think that would be priority number one for me, followed closely by safety and security for our staff and students, as well as, um, you know, enhancing or increasing our education, our rather closing our educational gaps, if you will. Um, you know, I know that comes along, we've got a lot of hurdles to cross, you know, teacher retention, 2019 budget that we're still operating on today. Um, I think we need to roll up our sleeves and work together as a community to see what we can do to improve um, and, and enhance Allen ISC and the overall community to make it a safe and, um, you know, thriving environment for our children in the school. Thank you. Um, our most important is to continue to show growth, academic growth for students, um, that they're showing at least one year of growth every year. And so the students are our number one, and that's why we're here. Um, of course, this year is going to be really important with our funding and making sure that we are advocates with our legislature to make sure that we are trying, that we can get more funding to support many of the unfunded mandates that they are putting and that we can give a salary increase to our teachers. We are running um, as tight as we can. We have made many budget cuts, um, but it's still not enough because we're not getting enough funding from the state. And we want to keep our teachers here. We want to make our teachers happy. And we know the cost of living continues to rise. And it's been it's really hard to, to find a way to give them a raise. And of course, safety and security um, for our students and making sure that we're keeping them safe and making them feel safe at school. Thank you. Uh, Bill, I'm going to ask you this question. This is for place three. Uh, are there specific student populations you believe are being underserved in the district? And if so, what steps should the district take to address that issue? Yep. Well, I believe all students, regardless of background, ethnicity, it doesn't matter. All students deserve an exceptional education. They deserve the tools and the opportunity and the access, as well as the encouragement to participate in that educational experience. And I believe Allen ISD does a really good job of including all students, regardless of race, color, ethnicity, needs, what have you. And they, uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> um, but uh, they, they need all these things so they can be successful after graduation, <laughs> whether it be in college, in a trade, or even in the military. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, this next question is for the two candidates in place two. Uh, Vatsa, I'm gonna start with you, and then Veronica. Next year, the legislature will be in session. It's likely at this point that vouchers may pass. So do you support that? And what do you foresee the real impact of that to be on Allen ISD? Um, <clears throat> vouchers are not, uh, something that I support. Uh, the reason behind that is because we have been funded from the state per student uh, on the basis of, uh, you know, what kind of community we are in, like, you know, whether we are a rich uh, community, 
uh, we get more, uh, less money, more money, depending on all those things. But if we are supporting the voucher, then we are going to take that money out of our system and we will be not left with enough money to serve our kids to give the best education that they deserve. Okay, thank you. Veronica. Okay, first I wanna start out by saying I believe Allen ISD is an exceptional school district. I know that I'm biased, but there are, in my opinion, is currently no alternative school option that will be able to offer the endless opportunities that Allen ISD offers its students. In my opinion, a parent should have the right to choose the best education option for their child. If a parent feels that a child is not receiving the best education opportunity to meet their child's learning needs, then they should have the right to decide the best learning environment for their child to excel. However, I also believe that if school choice should come to pass in Texas, there should also be accountability measures tied to it, just as there are for public schools. Okay, thank you. Uh, this next question is for the candidates in place one. Sarah, you'll go first, and you alluded to this a minute ago. Along the same lines, if additional funding is not provided by the legislature, what happens next in Allen ISD, especially over the next two years? Yes, um, we're really the next options are going to be having to start looking at our programs that we're offering, um, continuing to look at our staffing, looking at our ratios for students to teachers, um, and not being able to give our teachers a raise that they deserve. Um, we have, like I, I mentioned, we've we've already gone through a lot of, of budget cuts in trying to um, find ways to, to save where we can, um, but if, if we don't get any more funding it's going to start affecting the education of the children and that's why it's so important for us to continue to be advocates with our legislatures for them to be able to understand what we look like in Allen ISD. We don't look the same as every other district across the state and so it's important for us to show what our needs are and and continuing to um, to, to advocate for that so we can get that funding and support our district. Thank you. Shannon. Uh, will you repeat the question? Happy to. If additional funding is not provided by the legislature in the next session, what happens next in Allen ISD over the next two years? Okay, thanks. Um, I grew up in an oil town. We had a lot of money. Their state did something, or Colorado did something very similar where they were pulling tax dollars from our location as well. And there were definitely budget cuts that needed to take place. I don't disagree with Sarah that there are going to be some very difficult decisions that are going to need to be made in the coming um, months and years if we don't receive additional funding. Um, you know, we have, I think, a very large amount of instructional coaches. Um, there are places that I think we still may be spending money that we, you know, may need to take a second look at. The other thing I think we need to do is, you know, I'm sorry, I hate to say this, but if you talk about our problems with the rest of the state, most, most people don't feel sorry for Allen ISD. So at this point, I think we will also, as a community, need to have some grit. And I think we need to come up with alternative methods for how we're going to support this community going forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is for the candidates in place too. And Veronica, I'll start with you first. How do we retain our teachers and continue to recruit the best for Allen ISD in this environment? Okay, so as we all know, there is a teacher shortage across the nation. While this is, has not been my, this was not my idea, Allen ISD is on top of the issue and addressing it. Recently, our district introduced a new program, the Allen Academy for Certified Teachers, the ACT program. This program allows current paraprofessionals, oops, sorry, to earn and complete their teaching certifications while continuing to work in the district. They will receive a cost break on tuition and hands-on training by our current Allen ISD teachers in the district. And once they obtain their teaching certification, they will be uh, offered a teaching job within our district. It is an amazing opportunity for our paraprofessionals in Allen ISD, as in a program as Grow Your Own. I am excited for everyone involved for this opportunity. Bill, this question is for you in uh, place three. 
Uh, as a trustee, how would you ensure you're getting broad community? What? Vatsa. Oh, Vatsa, I'm so sorry. I'm just moving right along. Thank you. Can all. you repeat the question, please? <laughs> I'm happy to. Yeah. Uh, how do we retain our teachers and, and continue to recruit the best for Alan? Okay. I come from a family of educators. My grandfather was a teacher, two of my uncles were teachers, my aunt is a teacher. Uh, my dad wasn't a teacher, but he built a school. And we employ about 100 teachers in our school. So I completely understand um, the need for, um, you know, increasing the salaries of teachers. There is a saying where they say that teachers don't work for income, but they work for outcome, which is really true. But then, that does not mean that we should just not think about their income. Apart from that, give them leadership opportunities, give them uh, professional development training, give them opportunities to grow in their career, uh, and help them in achieving goals that are set by the district. Okay, that must be the zero. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, Bill, you know I'm coming. So uh, how would you ensure you're getting broad community input as you weigh decisions as a trustee? Yeah, communication is key, obviously. Uh, having forums like this, engaging parents, engaging taxpayers, and engaging students as well to get their inputs. Addressing different needs of, of all the students is, is going to be critical. You know, we all know that the students come from diverse backgrounds and experiences, and it's important to understand and recognize this through communication with parents and with the kids. With the board's strategic perspective, uh, it's important also to consider all these factors, as well as the inputs of the parents, taxpayers, and students in incorporating our decision-making process. Okay. This question is for all of you, and Bill, I'm gonna start with you and just come up uh, and finish with Sarah. What additional steps do you believe the district uh, should undertake to ensure student safety? <clears throat> student safety is off, off, obviously very critical given the recent events over the past couple of years, which have just been tragic. It's incumbent upon the board as well as all of us to ensure that students remain safe so they can focus their efforts on their education. They need to remain safe so that parents don't have to worry about what's going to happen to their kids at school. There are different ways to what I call harden the schools. Uh, when I was in the military, making a, a target soft or hard, a soft target was something that was easy to, to go after for a bad actor. A hard target was difficult to go after. So make our campuses hard targets. More difficult to go after by bad actors increasing security, increasing physical protections, and training the staff. Veronica. Okay, one of my main top three areas of focus is safety and security for all students. And um, recently I've, you know, with the um, House, House Bill 3, the HB3, where we are, re oh, hold on, sorry, let me back up. Yes, it, it is HB3, um, where we have armed personnel at all campuses, I think is is definitely something that, I, you know, I feel like we are doing that as a district, and it is something that is definitely needed. We need to ensure that all students are safe when they are in our in our hands, but I also feel like we constantly need to be testing our safety procedures to ensure that they are still working. Oh. Um, safety of students and staff is paramount. That it is non-negotiable. Um, some of the things that comes to my mind are a strong relationship with our law enforcement, uh, Allen Police Department, having more SROs deployed in our uh, schools, um, leveraging technology. Uh, installing cameras or, you know, there are a lot of different uh, 
technologies that we can use to uh, increase security. And then um, continuous improvement in um, procedures, drills, uh, awareness, um, making the kids aware of the procedures when there is a problem, what they need to do. Uh, the more and more you tell them, it gets into their head, and, and that is one of the things that we can do. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Thank you. Mandated SROs, I believe, are a deterrent, but I don't think it's a complete uh, fix to the problem. Um, I think credible threats need to be taken seriously. Uh, I'm on several forums in the city of Allen, and you hear uh, story after story after bullying, weapons and threats being made within the schools. These need to be investigated and taken very seriously. Uh, additionally, I know a couple of people in various educational roles that are talking about the security that's, or the use of technology that's happening within the school systems. You know, pictures being taken in the locker rooms, uh, horrible pictures being drop boxed in the cafeteria or whatever. We need to figure out a way to, you know, manage this in a way to, for the protection and the safety of our children. We have, yes, we were mandated to add some additional security this year, but we already had a strong relationship with our Allen Police Department and the SROs on campus, and that is a key piece. We know that they are there to support us, and having that, um, that partnership with them is pivotal in helping keeping our students safe. We and staff as well. Um, we have the vestibules as at every campus as you walk in for an additional security level. Uh, we are constantly doing drills across the district and audits through our safety, safety and security um, committees and outside sources. So we do a great job in our district. There's always room for growth and we can always do better. And it's got to be a number one priority for us and then we can continue to work on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, this question is for the candidates in place too. Uh, Veronica, I'm gonna start with you. Are you comfortable with the district's process for vetting the books that appear in the school's libraries? So there is a law in place currently by the state of Texas, which is HB 900, and um, I would hold the school accountable to assure that we're following the state policy. Okay. Well, um, the books that are kept in the library, the, the books that are made available to the students, the books that are there um, in the schools, are they uh, giving any uh, value add to the education? That is one thing that we need to look at. And if you're talking about banning books, is that what you're uh, referring to? I didn't answer the question. Okay, yeah. uh, anyway. Um, so there are, there are certain uh, things that I have read on social media that we should ban books and that. I'm, I'm not for, uh, you know, uh, any wrong type of material that is available, that should be available to the students, but I will let the experts make the decision, uh, the librarians make the decision. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bill, this question is for you. Um, are you satisfied with how the Board of Trustees is currently functioning, and is there anything you'd like to see different than the Board is currently doing? I think the Board of Trustees has done an outstanding job uh, over the past several years, it really as long as I can remember. They've had some very tough decisions to make over the years, and I think they have deliberated on those. They've interacted with the public, uh, received inputs from different levels, not only in the public, but also with the city and the government, churches, other community leaders and establishments. So I do credit them for that and reaching out to the public, making those tough decisions. Uh, what I would, uh, I wouldn't even say it's differently, but I would enhance the communication and outreach with the parents and with the taxpayers 
uh, as frequently as possible by multiple means, whether it be through social media, through regular postal services, and find out, uh, especially on the hot button issues of the day, what the public is thinking. Because in the end, the school board is representing the public and the parents as well as the students. Okay. Um, this uh, next question is for the candidates in place one. Uh, Shanna, you'll go first. Uh, what do you see ahead for Allen ISD that the community should prepare for? I think one of the things that I'd like to see um, is a, you know, we've talked about engagement some today. I want to see a more in-depth, uh, roll-up-your-sleeves type of engagement. Uh, you know, we spoke this morning about the ama amazing engagement opportunities that the you know, the community has been doing, being spearheaded by the school board. But as we do come into some greater challenges amongst the community, um, how are we going to, how are we going to, you know, deal with, you know, uh, declining enrollment, decreased budgets, do our optics match our narrative, et cetera? Because there's a lot of people out in the community who are confused. And so that communication needs to take place. And so that would be the vision that I see going forward that I think the community really needs to prepare for. Thank you. The, the two biggest things that I see probably are the just retaining teachers and um, between staying competitive um, amongst our neighboring districts. Um, like Watson noted, we know teachers don't, don't go don't become a teacher to make a lot of money, um, but they have to. We have to keep them sustained and and continue to show them how much we support them and how much we appreciate what they do for our students. Um, we are in the process of strategic planning and a bond committee at this time. So I do expect that they will bring a bond package to the school board for approval. Um, again, kind of seems to be my theme of the night is funding. So we have um, where our schools are getting and our campuses across the district are our need of maintenance and so that is where we're going to need to ask the community support to help us in getting our schools back up to par and and where they need to be okay uh, this next question um, you can answer however you would like uh, but I'll ask it of all of you, and Vatsa, if I may, I'm going to start with you, and then Veronica, and then Bill, and then Sarah, and then Shana, finish there. Uh, what's the biggest issue that you're hearing about as you campaign for this seat? So you can address that, or you can address anything that was asked of the other candidates that I didn't specifically ask of you. The issues that I am seeing, um, there is a huge increase of recapture compared to last year. Uh, it was like almost, uh, we used to pay a million dollars and last year we had paid two million dollars and now this year we have paid seven million dollars and then it is going to increase exponentially. So finance is a big issue that I am seeing for the school district. We are giving excellent education for our, dear, for our uh, students here. We want to maintain that excellence uh, in our school district. Without funding, without money, we cannot do that. So I see that as a very big issue that is coming up in the future years. And I would agree, the biggest uh, issue that comes up in concern is funding. And um, I feel like a lot of that has, is really kind of out of our power right now. A lot of it is because of the lack of funding that we're receiving from the state of Texas uh, in regards to the basic allotment per student, as well as the mandates that they've put on the district that, and they're not funding properly. So I, I would say it's funding because that's what a lot of people, and, they they talk about how we're not you're running a deficit but it all comes together because of we're not receiving the uh, correct amount of funding that we should be getting okay i think one of the big issues and it's related of course to budget as just about everything that we talk about is is uh, what we're going to do about the district's population 
uh, especially given that as, as the city of Allen is being built out, uh, we are not bringing in significant numbers of new families, younger families, to come in and to replace the, uh, the, the leaving students. I saw a graph the other day and, and it was like really nice and steep and then all of a sudden it starts leveling off like this. Well, as we build out and as our population ages and the price of housing continues to rise, we are going to be hard pressed to find new families to come into the area and keep those schools going. Additionally, districts are funded by what I call butts in seats. So as we lose those students in those chairs, we also lose funding associated with that. So I would support the board finding ways to attract these new families by teaming with City of Allen officials, with the Allen Chamber of Commerce, the foundation. Is that it? Okay. So again, the theme here for funding, um, and um, and as a, as a board, we have spent every meeting um, for for many months, and and that is all we have been focusing or a, a high priority for us to be focusing on budget. So, it continues to be the number one. But I also I feel like communication comes up a lot, and that the board um, that you know we hear a lot that we're not communicating enough, and so I think for us, you know, it is a challenge of what do we need to do to get that communication out in the right way because we feel like that we are putting it out everywhere we can we're on social media it's newsletters that we're reaching our silver eagles we have our community engagement nights so we are trying really hard to get that word out but clearly the community isn't always seeing that so to me I think take that as a challenge for us of how we can figure out the best way to get that communication to our community so I guess funding's a problem. We check that off the list. Um, I am going to jump on what Sarah said earlier too, which is teacher retention. That is something that's come up a lot with us. But on top of that, as we talk about teacher retention, I'm also hearing overcrowded classrooms in every classroom. Um, I was made aware um, in one of our schools the other day that there's a single teacher that's uh, responsible for 180 ESL students by herself. That's a pretty heavy load. And my assumption is that this teacher is likely very burnt out. Um, one of the other things that I'm hearing a lot of is getting back to basics, core education. You know, we have a lot of amazing programs here, but as we talk about these fundings and what needs to, you know, stay or go, we at this point might need to start evaluating what's a nice to have and what's a need to have. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so now we're to the point of closing statements, and I'm going to go in the reverse order that we went at the beginning. Uh, Bill, I'll start with you, and, and we'll end this way. Great. Once again, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for coming out tonight and, and hearing all of us. Um, I come from a family of educators. My mom taught uh, not only in Tyler, Texas, where she was born, but also when we moved here to Richardson a long time ago. Or not here to Richardson, to Richardson uh, a, a long time ago. While this is certainly not unique, uh, what differentiates me is my servant leadership experience, not only in the military, but also in education and in my personal life. So I've been successful in the military as a colonel in the Air Force. Uh, I've had successful leadership positions as an executive director and as a chief information officer in school districts. And um, in my personal life, I've had leadership experiences as head drum major of the Aggie Band, uh, leadership positions in the Knights of Columbus, and I'm an Eagle Scout as well. Thank you. Okay, in closing, let me leave you with this final thought. I believe in leaving things better than I found them. I will bring this same passion with me if given the opportunity to serve Allen ISD. We are facing unprecedented times in our state in public education, and I want to make a difference. I will be a voice of reason, one that will listen to understand. One main area of focus missing in, out in the Allen ISD community is the ability to sit down and have tough conversations with key stakeholders. We must get back to the basics of building relationships across the school district and community. I am passionate about this community I call home, and we are better together. I want all students to excel from our, talented, from our gifted and talented students to our special education students in the district. I want every family to feel welcome 
and know that we are here to serve their students. I want Allen ISD to lead the way in achieving exceptional educational outcomes. Thank you. Um, I want to say that um, I have been serving the uh, school district and the city for about 13 years now. So you can go take a look at my bio uh, on my website, uh, look at my contributions, look at my priorities, um, my experience, and I have a personal commitment to serve the school district because I am a big fan of education. Um, and I just want to leave you with this, that I will be a representative of the community on the school board. I'll be your voice. I will listen to you. I'll come to you if you have any problems. And I just want to leave you with that thought. But please go visit my meetwatsar.com. Thank you. As I mentioned before, I moved to Allen specifically because of the school district. When we talk about bonds, I voted for the bond for the new stadium, the new performing arts center, and the new, what we call the bus barn, before I ever even had children because I believed in the development of this community. We do have bonds that are gonna be necessary in coming forward. We need a community that's gonna believe in these bonds so that we can get them passed for the greater good of our community. Um, if elected, I want to have that transparency with our community to discuss the pros and the cons of what these bond packages will and will not deliver so that people can make an educated guess. Uh, by and large, I feel like people feel like they've been bamboozled for the better part of you know, the last few years. And you know, they're not buying into what, we're, what they feel like they're being sold. They need to feel like they have uh, are hearing the truth, they need to feel heard, and that's what I'm here to do. Please vote for Shanna Coulter for place one. So thank you to the organizers for this event and to my fellow candidates who are here, and especially to you all out in the audience for your kind attention. As an experienced trustee of six years, I will continue to focus on the responsibilities of board members to set the vision and goals, adopt policy and budget, evaluate the superintendent, and communicate with the community. We have outstanding educators and administrators working hard to provide our students with the best possible education. I am looking forward to continuing to be a part of the great future of our district. My knowledge and extensive experience in the community and on the board will help me to continue to provide leadership and build a vision all can share in. To do this, the board must remain responsive to and listen to all constituents. I ask for your vote on May 4th for re-election. It would be an honor to continue to serve the Allen ISD School Board. Sarah Mitchell, place one, where eagles soar. Thank you. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you. And I'd also like to take just a moment and thank the two trustees who are retiring this cycle. I see Sam Abiog and Kevin Cameron here. Thank you both for your service to the district. And as I said at the outset, election day is May the 4th. Early voting starts Monday, April the 22nd. It's 8 to 5 the first week and 7 to 7 the last two days, 29th and 30th of April.